All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and let you make up your mind whether or not you believe that AMD Ryzen CPU failure rates in a report is claiming that there are higher failure rates than the 13th and 14th generation CPUs from Intel. Now, this is coming from Puget Systems. And if I'm to be completely honest, the name Puget, just that in, in, in and of itself, Puget systems data reveals that the firm has avoided intel instability issues through self-tested quote-unquote power limits and settings new stats for intel core and amd cpus were revealed so intel's 14th and 13th generation cpus instability fiasco has been ongoing for quite some time all right so we're going to come down here based on the data compiled by the firm it is evident that intel's 14th generation and 13th generation cpus have seen a massive spike in failure rates. Now, I want to say something really quickly before I forget, and that is that when I said that I was concerned about my computer having problems, I'm fully aware that the CPUs on a consumer level, there's not that big of a problem, but this is what I do for a living. So to the people that were asking, why don't you just get a, instead of building an entirely different computer, why don't you just get a a, like a 13700 or a 14700 or something like that and it is because dude this is what i do for a living i do not feel like potatoing my computer and lowering the performance just to avoid a failed cpu so that is why i was explaining that i was going to be building a second computer with a 7800x 3d or a 7950x 3d or whatever one of the new 9000 series of cpus from amd but from what i am aware of this is another topic that we're going to be covering here hardware unboxed made a video the other day covering the misleading information that amd was spitting out of their mouth which to be completely honest all the companies do that anything that they say before it's in consumers hands don't believe it because it's a bunch of bs but either way the puget systems intel core cpu failures <laughs> Per month, we have the 10700K, the 10900, you got all these right here, and you can see. And then we come down here, we have field failures and then shop failures, the Puget systems. Dude, that really is annoying. Puget, what is that company? So, anyways, you see the field the field failures, the shop failures. Your boys' cookies are definitely gonna be burnt. I heard my time thing go off. In the majority of cases, we are staying the course for now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you read this while I go check my cookies. Real quick, just wanted to say that if you would like a PC from me, my Facebook business page is linked down in the description below. I do not charge you anything other than the cost of parts, which I do in fact give you a full list of everything with the final cost before I order it all with my own money. You do not pay me anything until you see the video, the performance, the benchmarks, and all of that kind of stuff. So again, link down in the description below. Probably another five minutes before the cookies are officially done so in the majority of cases we are staying the course now we will immediately validate the intel microcode update when it is released we will contact all affected cons cust little, customers to provide the intel microcode update we are extending our warranty to three years for all customers affected by this issue regardless of warranty purchased with a puget systems pc <laughs> Dude, I can't stop doing it. That's such a weird Puget. 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 That's such a weird name. You should be able to, you should be able to count on it working for you. If we no longer have supply of 13th or 14th generation processors, we'll end up upgrading you to a more current generation. So this is like uh there's a, I want to share that video from Hardware Unboxed with you. Uh so hardware, hardware unboxed because they just barely made this video on this and I want to show it to you so that you can realize I'm not talking out of my rear end. So this right here it says why is mislead AMD misleading people? It's the CPU the, to be fair this is a completely pointless CPU to get like the whatever it's totally pointless. So I'll show you right here. So this is the old 5950X and then this is the 5900X 3D. So you like you can see like the the freaking older CPU is better than the new one. And anyways, like, I'm not going to, whatever, show you guys their whole video. If you can, holy affiliate links, bro. I'm sure he's making Amazon more than enough money. So you see right here, all of the chapters that he's pretty much going over. It's a real, it's kind of a pointless CPU to get. And, um, I don't know.
So if we come back here, we got the Puget systems, Intel CPU failure rates by model. And oh, wow, they're not going over the AMD. Hello? Am I just dumb right now or did I did? I, am I? OK, right here. OK, I was going to say what the f, f you. <laughs> so you have the Puget systems, CPU failure rates by generation. And then this is AMD and Intel. And then this is just Intel. So we have the 11900K. I actually never upgraded to the 11,000 or to the 11 series. I went from a 9900K to a 12900K to a 13900K to a 14900K to a soon to be whatever 15900K. But uh, anyways, so I wanted to share this with you just because I find that pretty interesting. Oh, I should have just come over here to the actual freaking thing. Okay, here we go. So we got AMD. So our plan of action. So I do. Okay, so I want to. So we have. I want to talk about this now because I'm sure that this is whatever something a lot of people. Is this one? All right. So we have. Okay. So that's just a different one. And then we have. Okay, so this right here extended warranties for unopened boxes Do you understand how much of a face palm that is? Do you please tell me you can at least face palm as hard as me right now? You know what I'm gonna do? You know, what? I Need to legally I need to legally make this statement. This is not a recommendation from me This is not advice from me and this is not me suggesting or telling you to do anything This is just a random idea that popped into my mind that only really bad people would ever think about doing and if you get caught with this you like this is actually not sarcasm you will get arrested for doing this so i probably should not say it actually so i'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people that currently have a failed okay actually i can speak about what people are going to do rather than recommending so i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that have like a, a failed 14900k and then what what's going to end up happening is we're going to have somebody buy a brand new 14900k and um there's probably going to be someone that maybe possibly takes the failed 14900k out of the cpu and maybe possibly puts the f cpu there's a bug in the the box and returns it and claims it's unopened that's possibly what could happen that's not a recommendation of what people are going to do but I did Intel's like to be honest, man, I really am. I'm at a, I'm this is it's it's actually mind blowing because dude, Intel's such a big company. Like they're so far ahead of AMD. And look, this is not me taking a dump on AMD. This is just a fact, okay? So Intel is so far ahead of AMD that they have more than enough money to make up for what is going on with their CPUs. Okay? Like they need to realize that these, these these updates that they're about to release for people with the with the cpu that has been literally been being used for over a year at this point they just barely like reduce their cpu's lifespan by like five years probably throughout this year of the power being cranked up to its maximum of, of maximus and whatever like this is something that i you can go back to my older videos i mentioned this with the 14900 because it was annoying the crap out of me and i couldn't figure it out so a while obviously the bios was updated and it fixed this problem but like the first six months of me having the cpu man what was ended what was happening is i would i would be in my video editor and like i would get these like lag spikes and it wasn't making the video editor unusable it wasn't like it was a frustrating experience but dude, like I bought this computer when it was brand new. And yes, I'm fully aware what the price I'm about to say is COVID inflation, but it is what I paid during this time period. Okay. So I paid a little bit over $4,500 for that computer right now. It's probably worth about 3,500. Okay. If, if I bought all brand new parts, it would be about $3,500. And when you pay that amount of money for a computer, you don't expect lag spikes in your video editor, period. That's just a fact. Okay. So like what was happening is I would be using this and 
the reason my video editor was like bogging out and lagging is because the and it still does it or it doesn't do it as often or frequently but the 14900k dude it would just like boost like to the 6.2 just sitting here doing nothing just random oh i turned my computer on let's run it 6.2 gigahertz at 100 percent to its maximum temperature even though it's doing nothing so what would ended up what what was happening is because it was doing that non-stop non-stop and then when you open up programs it's like oh this that hoo, 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 hoo. it was like doing a workout it's like lift don't lift do lift don't lift it's like 6.2 4 6.2 4 6.2 4 100 degrees 40 100 degrees 40 100 degrees 40 100 degrees so what was happening it was like it was like constantly boosting to its maximum thermal its maximum temperature and every time it hit its limit it would like it would lag out my video editor it was beyond frustrating or actually it wasn't frustrating but whatever because i'm making it sound worse than it was because it was actually frustrating dude at the time period but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and end the video i know i'm kind of rambling on at this point i'm spitting all over my monitor my hair is actually starting to grow back. I'm pretty happy. It's not looking as lame anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. This I just think it's wild that Intel's just like just basically like laughing at people. They're like, oh, it's okay. Like you just barely paid. Dude, it's so hard because it's not fair to just say $600. Like, that's not how it works, okay? Like, when you get a 14900K that that cost you $600, you're not going to be getting the same memory as if you were to get an i3. You're not going to be getting the same NVMe as if you were getting an i3. You're not going to be getting a, the cheapest of cheap budget potato-ass motherboards if you were to get an i3. You're getting high-end everything, right? So, like them claiming or saying oh it's only six hundred dollars for your cpu nah dude you have a four hundred dollar motherboard you have two hundred dollars worth of memory you have a two hundred dollar nvme you have all high-end stuff inside of your computer because you got the highest end cpu from intel and pairing a high-end cpu with a bunch of other potato parts you're literally just wasting money on the cpu so the only people that pay $600 for their CPU and then pay a couple hundred bucks for the rest of the shit are just morons, okay? <laughs> so like, it just, it blows me away that like we're, I don't, I honestly don't believe this, that they're claiming that AMD has a higher failure rate than Intel. That seems like clickbait to me, but uh, I digress, dude. Let me know what you guys think about this. I, if any company that has CPUs failing, period, I don't care if it's whatever a year past warranty dude if you buy because like if you buy a 14900k dude and it works for a year you clearly installed it properly you didn't like frick up your cpu i can smell my cookies burning so i'm gonna end it end it up here so uh you know what i mean like it was working for a whole year you clearly didn't mess anything up it is your cpu that you freaking decided to boost to 6.2 gigahertz and 100 degrees celsius non-stop while your computer is like just freaking sitting there doing nothing and then when you actually turn it on to do other things it still does it so and then everybody like it's like these these like fa this fanboyism between these companies is ridiculous it's like i get these comments like oh if you got a 14900k it's just common sense to go into your bios and undervolt your cpu that's common sense that's common sense to you dude i've been running a pc building business for a little bit over two years now i didn't start going into the bios and doing all of that stuff until probably a year down the road i was updating the bioses and i was doing the xmp profiles and all that kind of stuff but i was never going into the bios and like manually blah, 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 manually why is that so hard for me to say tinkering with the settings on my own rather than just ai one click buttoning it you know <laughs> so anyways so no that is not common sense and anybody that says that is just one of the the geekiest nerd school freaks on the planet because that is not common sense oh hey i just barely bought a new computer that i don't know how to build but it is common sense to go into my bios and undervolt my cpu because that's just clearly common sense dude how dumb are you
you're like you're trying to be smart by telling people that's common sense but you're just making yourself look like a freaking moron that's like being that's like having a lamborghini oh hey i'm gonna go buy a lamborghini and i'm gonna do all my maintenance on it because it's just common sense if i if i blow my engine i'm just gonna fix it because it's common sense <laughs> i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one peace